Welcome back to the 30 Minute Missions Tabletop Game. In this briefing we will be going over the basics of gameplay. This includes setup, the three phases of each player's turn, and some important notes. An advanced gameplay briefing will come at a later time and will go into further detail about each phase and different command actions. Prior to beginning a game, you should have already created each unit status sheet utilizing the parts list. Please note, that this is an ever-evolving game so what is presented here may not be final. To start, set up your battlefield in whichever configure you see fit. Terrain will bring variety and challenge to your battles. Next, both players roll a d12. Highest roll determines who goes first. They then take turns placing their units onto the deployment area. The deployment area is the three closest hexes to the players on their sides. The player may deploy their units in any direction, elevation, or on terrain they see fit as long as they are within the deployment area. Once all units are deployed, the player with the highest dice roll begins their turn. Player turns are broken down into three phases, movement, ranged combat, and close combat. Each turn is linear. This means the player cannot perform the close combat phase before the movement or ranged combat phases or vice versa unless specifically stated on a unit status sheet. Some weapons, armors, and or parts will grant special abilities allowing for phases to be performed non-linearly. For this example we will be using a standard B, EXM-15 Porta Nova with a short barrel beam, rifle and a combat axe facing against a custom alto, the SNK-13 LRS Banshee, with a long-range sniper rifle, sidearm pistol, and a combat knife. This will be a 1v1 training scenario on the training grounds. Both players roll a d12 to see who goes first. Since the player with a Banshee rolled higher, they will deploy their unit and start the movement phase. On the battlefield, the player selects a unit and rolls the d12 to see how much AP it has. If we look at the datasheet, we find all of the unit's stats. The Banshee has three standard movement points. This means that it can move three hexes as long as they are within the unit's field of view. For training purposes we will be moving the Porta Nova, within the max firing range of the Banshee sniper rifle and transitioning into the ranged combat phase. In ranged combat, the units do exactly that, fight from a distance. Here, the player will be firing at the Porta Nova's right arm with the sniper rifle. To do that, they need to know some vital information first. In the datasheet, under the section weapon parts slash stats, we see the sniper rifle and all of the parts used to construct it. In the total row, you find durability, range, flat damage, actions points, an ability bonus, for the weapon. As you can see, the sniper rifle does massive damage but at a high AP cost. To start, the sniper rifle needs to be in the unit's hands. If it's not, you will need to use a command action to swap the weapon from carried, to held, so plan ahead. Next, the target needs to be within range of the firing weapon and the unit needs line of sight. This means that when the player is looking over the unit's shoulder, closest to the head, they should clearly see the part they want to attack. Then the player subtracts the weapon's AP from the unit's AP that was rolled in the movement phase for every shot. Here, the player only gets one shot, so it needs to count. To see if the shot is accurate they roll a d8. This is called an accuracy roll. On the Banshee's datasheet they only need to roll a 4 or higher. If you roll a perfect 8, the target cannot evade. Since the shot was accurate but not perfect, the Porta Nova gets a chance to evade. On its data sheet in the evasion row, it shows 7 plus. This means that the player needs to roll a 7 or higher with a d8 to successfully evade the incoming attack. Being that the shot hit its target, the player then rolls a d8 for damage. This is called a damage roll. You add this number to the weapon's flat damage. Again this is for every shot. If you roll a perfect 8, this is called a critical hit and doubles the weapon's flat damage. 
To summarize, after choosing a target that is within the weapon's range and having a clear line of sight on the part to attack, the player rolls for accuracy. The target then has an opportunity to evade since the roll was not perfect. It failed. The player now rolls for damage and that number combined with the weapon's flat damage is subtracted from the overall defense of that part. But what if the player wanted to use a melee attack? For training purposes, we will move the Porta Nova within melee range but instead of moving from the movement phase to the ranged combat phase, and then to the close combat phase, we will be going from the movement phase, skipping the ranged combat phase, and starting in the close combat phase. At the beginning of this phase, the Banshee has the sniper rifle in its hands. To swap to the combat knife, the player will spend 3 AP. This is called a command action. All command actions cost 3 AP. The player will be attacking the Porta Nova's torso this time. If we go back to the datasheet, we see that it costs 2 AP to attack with the combat knife. With the remaining AP, the player can attack 3 times. After subtracting the AP, the unit can now roll to see if the attacks hit. This is called a strength roll and is similar to the accuracy roll. Since the player can attack three times, this means that they roll a d8 for every attack. As you can see, out of the three rolls, only two of them were on target because in order to successfully hit, the Banshee needs to roll five or higher. Also, out of the two successful hits, one of them was a perfect hit which means the Port Nova cannot evade it. This gives the Port Nova one chance to evade the incoming attack. Just like with the failed sniper rifle evasion, this also fails. This means that the player conducts two damage rolls. During the damage roll, we see that 1d8 is a critical hit. As stated before, this means that the weapon's flat damage is doubled. Once you add up both damage rolls with one normal flat damage and one doubled flat damage, this value is subtracted from the Porta Nova's torso defense value. Some important notes to remember. Action points, points used for all non-movement actions within the game. Determined by D12 at the start of the movement phase. Command actions, any action that isn't moving or actively attacking. Can be used throughout the phases. Movement points, the set amount of hexes a unit can move. Specified on the unit status sheet. Field of view, the three hexes in front of a unit. When moving, the unit must move to a hex in your FOV. Similarly, when attacking, the unit must also have the target within its FOV. A player cannot use a weapon if they do not have the AP to spend. When making multiple attacks, a player must roll for accuracy slash strength for every attack. If every shot hits, then the player rolls multiple damage rolls that can crit. However, if every shot misses, then the target gets multiple attempts to counter. After the close combat phase is completed for every unit on the player's battlefield, that player's turn is over and the second player's turn begins. This is the basics of gameplay. It may seem complex in the beginning but with a firm understanding of the turns, it will become simple quickly. The goal is to make gameplay simple but offer the player multiple choices on how to attack, defend, and move. We hope to provide a diverse way for each player to complete different missions based on how they want to play and what kind of creations they want to make.